Uh, let's go a little bit back here to Tulare and Visalia. I understand you were into R&B back then, is that right? Yeah, pretty much R&B and blues, stuff like that. Now, I worked in Tulare, so I'm dying to know, where was uh, an R&B club in Tulare that you guys played at? Uh, there wasn't any, well, any gig you wanted to play with an R&B club. It's, um, I did play down at the uh, Elf Club on P Street, Tulare, and that was pretty much an R&B club, if you will. And uh, I played in a lot of bands that played like half R&B and half English Invasion music when I was in high school and stuff. Had a blues band before I left town, so wherever I played is wherever that was. And how did you get the R&B records back then, like the B.B. King stuff? Was that hard to get or what? No, not at all, no. I, I go down and buy them, you know. I had a whole, I still got most of them, to be honest all with right. you. Yeah. My brother turned me on to a couple when I was real young. Now, what was it like working on the club circuit back then when you were coming up? Rough. <laughs> uh, I used to pay about five hours for five dollars. Sometimes get your ass kicked for free. Sorry about that, folks. That's the way it was. Um, it was, you know, we were living in a hick area, so it was whatever you could find. We played in, um, or I played, you know, depending on whoever was playing, Porterville, Tulare, Hanford, uh, Fresno occasionally, uh, Tulare, Visalia, Lindsay, Reedley, all that stuff, you know. I remember that well. What um, Now, it's a big step from there to going national. When you guys hooked up, was it mainly in San Jose, or where did you guys all get together? We were all in San Jose at that time. Yeah, I was going to school at San Jose State, and uh, John came out from Washington, D.C., along with a bass player. And Pat was going to, uh, to uh, San Jose State as well. And uh, everything took place there, and that's where the band got started. Now, can you explain a little bit about the writing partnership between, I think it was you and, was it Tom, or Pat? Was it? Uh... <laughs> Actually, we both kind of wrote our own songs, and then what we would do is bring in the songs, and everybody would have ideas, uh, be it a bass part, or, and we'd come up with harmony parts together and, and stuff like that. So that, uh, did you come up with listening to music just uh, basically in a day, or how did that happen? I came up, like so many songs, I came up with the rhythm, I mean, the, the structure of it, but I didn't have any words. I'd call the producer, wake him up in the middle of the night, and say, oh, you're going to love it, this is going to be great. And, and uh, play it for him, he says, well, it sounds pretty good, but I don't know, and you know, blah, 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 three in the morning, he didn't care either. But um, we usually get the track done, and then I would write the words. Now, how did it work out that you were pretty much lead on all the songs? Was it just that way, or did do, uh, because you were the writer, or? Uh, yeah, if you wrote the song, you sang the song. That's how it went. So that's pretty much how that went. Could I get a background on Blackwater? Uh, great. I didn't write that, okay. so you have to get that from that. that. Okay. I think uh, we were in the South a lot. I think both he and I were influenced by that. And um, we both wrote songs about the South, and, and that's where Blackwater came from. But I don't know all the details. Did you ever anticipate that you'd hit it as big as you guys did? Because it seems like with listening to music, you hit big, and then it, it just kept going up and up and up. No, I'll be honest with you, I didn't even anticipate music as a life. Uh, I was planning on being a graphic designer. Uh, and I just kind of walked into that. I mean, I'd always played music and I was still playing music, but uh, I didn't expect to ever hit it or anything. I was just doing it because I love playing. And it just happened. So it's one of those uh, walk through the right door at the right time things. Did the graphic design help you at all with like any of the album covers or any of the writing? No, it had absolutely no influence on my musical life. How about, uh, can I get a story on China Grove or some of the other ones? China Grove was just a rock song I wrote and once again the words came later and uh, I didn't know that there really was a China Grove to about two years later after I wrote it and uh, I got told by a cab driver it really existed and I said, get out of here. He said, yeah, it really does, man. It's right about where you said. Kind of blew me away, but I, I we used to tour by Winnebago in like '71 and '72, and uh, so we must have driven down that road. And I guess I saw it and locked it away someplace. When you did hit it big, do you feel like paying all the dues uh, really paid off? Because I know those clubs weren't great. I think uh, you know I never know. I will never know. Some people have come up in this business and had none of that and done just fine, but. I mean, it's, it's the way it was, and that's, you know, I'm getting, it got my chops up for playing in bars, I can guarantee you that, but uh, it's really hard to say. I'm not saying that you'd have to do that to really do it right. I would never say that. You know, I mean, I think it's good to appreciate where you came from, but uh, we were still playing bars when we made it, so, you know. What about the blues licks, like with B.B. King and some of your other influences? Did that help you, obviously, in the writing and in your playing? 
I think uh, everything from Bo Diddley to Albert Beebe, Freddie King, James Brown, uh, Otis Redding, I mean, you know, just a whole lot of people had a lot to do with how I wrote and sang and everything else. Um, words, that's another ball game. Writing lyrics, they just come from wherever they come from. And what came, I know this is probably a bizarre question, but the, the album Captain and Me was very popular. Did that come off of any idea? Uh, there was a song on the album called Captain Me. That's where that came from. <laughs> no deeper than that. And how is it now? Is it any different touring uh, back again than it was uh, back in the 70s? Yeah, we're not flying. We're on a bus now. Uh, I think it's different than that. I think everybody, uh, I don't think, I know everybody practices more. I think we're probably playing better now than we used to back then, to be honest with you. Uh, but uh, everybody's still enjoying it. We're having a good time. And hence, that's why we're still doing it.